<laughs> and you see, it, I know it's acting, but it does sound really horrifically disingenuous and gross when a man whose religion supports anti-LGBTQ rights is talking about how you should accept everybody, even if it is through the face of a yellow plastic figure. Yeah. Practice what you preach. Turn the other cheek. Hi, everybody. Oh, don't, don't preach. Yeah, don't preach. Creepy, creepy preacher man. Creepy, creepy fun. Wait, have you been watching season two of Punisher? No. <laughs> have you been watching season three of Preacher? Uh, no. Ah, well, there we are. Uh, the res the rub. Good evening, hello. boys and well, I'm gonna check the demographic. Boys, girls, yeah. non-binary. The al- the analytics are swaying heavily toward the B word. Yes, um, but you know, hey. But we know we have listeners of all. Genders, colors, and creeds, lack um, thereof, uh, d- uh, pl- interplanetary systems, and uh, you know, just sort of d- d- cream egg preference. How do cream. how do you eat yours? Uh, you just put it in your mouth. Really? Put it in your mouth. Put it in your mouth. See, I I I recently realised I have a cream egg technique. What's your cream egg technique? I bite the top half off, or most of the top half, and then I lick out the contents until there's only a little bit left. And then I eat the rest of it in one go. I didn't think I had a technique. And then you and eat then I the caught egg. myself doing it. Oh! Ah! 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 Dirt. <laughs> well, we're starting as we mean to go on. Yes, we are. With utter filth. You're listening to Big Damn Cast. I am Chris <laughs> Johnson. I am Matthew Homogenous Slime Watson. But, oh, yes. Mm, not primordial soup. No, Homogenous Slime. Oh. Where do I end and where do I begin? You don't know because I'm pasteurized and homogenous. Next week he'll be a homunculized jelly. Oh! Um, that doesn't make any sense, but you know what else doesn't make sense? Popular culture, which is why we so, gather here once every week to talk shit so about it. So much. None of it makes sense. None of it does. Such as beloved franchises <sighs> that are very close to one person's heart in this room being bastardised and recontextualised and looking... Well, we'll see. As we discuss the Charles Play trailer, we're also going to be touching up on the news of Marvel's latest animated adventure, The Offenders, and the, the... four animated series coming to Hulu. Mm. And uh, mm. following that, you may have seen our review on YouTube earlier in the week for the Lego Movie 2, The Second Part. Yeah. Well, we'll be going in-depth with just some spoiler chin-wagging talking about it. So for those s- who've already seen it. The second part of our The Second Part coverage. Ah, uh, I see uh, what you did there. Uh, did you? But I have to hear it, because it's an audio medium. Yes. So let's talk <laughs> about... I don't know, which one do you want to do first, Chris? I think let's touch on something happy first. Let's talk about uh, the potential that uh, Marvel are offering us. Oh, we want to go. We want to go. Uh, news blast animated series first. Okay. Hit me with your news. So, Hit me with ten tons of news. So and it was. Boyfriend. It's just been announced. Uh, so Disney have now own Hulu because monopolies. Yeah, um, and <laughs> we are going soon. Going to get. The Offenders. Say what? A new adult animation initiative from Jeff Loeb and Marvel Television. Now, so I do enjoy the work of Jeff Loeb, but Jeff I Loeb, enjoy some Jeff of Loeb, the work of Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb and adult usually results in wasp being eaten by blob. Mm, so mm, mm, what does mm. that mean? Well, <laughs> we're gonna get an Offenders cartoon. What is The Offenders, well, you handsome waif? To know that, we're going to have to learn more about the four cartoons that are going to lead up to The Offenders. Hmm. And they are... Are you ready for this? Dun, dun, dun. Racist man. Bigotry woman. Jordan Bloom and Patton Oswalt teaming up to bring us Modoc. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. Before we go any further... <laughs> the year is 2008 and comic book fans are excited to see the release of The Dark Knight in the Dark cinemas Knight. after The Batman Begins it was yeah. a really interesting uh, reboot of the Batman franchise it's dark it and gritty feel... and very adult and grown up yeah but at the same time you know didn't skip on the imagery it knew that the big flying bat wings and all that stuff and the man with a burlap sack on his head was you know important to what made it tick for fans <laughs> 
Yes. You know, like we needed to see these things. Yes. The Batmobile may be a tank, but it's still a big, imposing black vehicle zooming around a city and jumping on rooftops and stuff. Yeah, and he gets still, a sweet motorcycle. It's a nice blend. It's a nice blend of everything, and we're all yeah. we're all cautiously optimistic about this weird portrayal of the Joker, and it's going to be a good time. But at the same time, this year, Marvel Studios is starting a full venture on 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 two motion pictures. Yeah, which they suggest may be connected. And those motion pictures are later in the year, The Incredible Hulk, but earlier in the year, competing with Batman, slightly before it, uh, Iron Man. And we're all like, hey, we're Marvel fans. This is pretty exciting. They're making an Iron Man movie. They're making another Hulk movie. But what I've, could possibly yeah. go wrong? But but this time they're calling it Incredible Hulk. It's almost like they're saying to us, hey, we're going to we're gonna be a bit more comic booky and embrace it here. It's not going to be like about... You know, psychology yeah. and trauma, and it's using not comic be... books as just its visual sort of style. And there's not going to be Hulk poodles, like. Which, if you did that now, I bet they could do that now in a way where we all go, "Yeah, Hulk poodles." Yeah, they totally, definitely. Could. But definitely, because the rest of the film wouldn't be a moody meditation on parents and, and relationships, and Nick Nolte, just and Nick Nolte is screaming. the absorbing man because reasons. reasons? So, <laughs> but we were all we were all pretty we were all pretty excited. Cause it was like, okay. But we weren't like, yeah! We were like, oh, wow, an Iron Man movie. We're at this point. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's 11 years later and MODOK is one of four Marvel characters getting an animated series. MODOK, the giant flying head yeah. creature scientist robot thing that leads advanced idea mechanics. Yeah, or a version who thereof. Who have already appeared in a serious quote-unquote film now. Well, I don't think this is going to be... In their gestation. Yes. Like, like, AIM have been in... Iron Man 3. Yeah. We're in a world where these obscure ass elements of comic book lore. Yeah. Are getting headline shows. Yeah. But that's not all. I can't fathom this. Who else? Who else is on the lineup? Tell me we've got some girl power in this lineup, Matthew Woodsign. Tell me we've got some girl power by Jiminy. I, I, I am going to tell you we've got some girl power. About damn time. Erica uh, Rivinoia and Chelsea Handler are bringing us Tigra. And Dazzler. Right. Hold the fuck up. Which sees, and I quote, two woke superheroes teaming up in LA (laughs) for what may be the first time in any medium. (laughs) I mean... Okay. Tigra. I'm not the biggest fan of Chelsea Handler's humour. And Dazzler. But... At the same time, there's an attitude to her humour, which I think you need to go into what sounds like a comedy superhero pros- project. Like yeah. all these sound like they're comedy shows using a superhero. Oh filter. yeah, yeah. As we'll get, we'll get, so as we'll get further down the list. And go, I, yes, this is I, a comedy. Project. I'm interested in that choice. Yes. Uh, regardless of me not being a fan of her, like stand up, I'm like okay. Especially because Tigra is an odd one. Tigra, literally, she is an odd one. Like we, she has her fans, but she is one of those characters where you take a step back and go, ultimately. On the surface level, yeah, this is a sexy cat woman in a bikini. She's an Avengers slash Avengers West Coast sea lister, mm. a, a formidable foe, but also a formidable foe in a bikini. Yeah, so it's like, huh? They're going to do something with that. They're absolutely going to do something with that. And not only that, Dazzler, guaranteed, they're going to bring Dazzler into like the the modern kind of like reality TV celebrity version. Of, of what, it's, what it means to be a pop star. Miley Cyrus. Oh Dazzler. my god, that, this is a Marvel project with a mutant then? Yes. Dazzler's a mutant? Yes. Okay. But it's not MCU, so... True, but I they, mean, they do tend to steer clear of the Fox stuff where they can help it. True. Like, even Legion is on Fox. Well, it's a Fox TV. And, yeah. and, um... and it's coming to a close. The, the next series is the last, and Professor X will be a cast member. Oh. Yeah. Um... So yeah, I'm not playing it though. So I was playing the Wonder um, Sykes cast. Wonder Sykes as Professor X. Okay, just do it. Um, I was playing. <laughs> I was at arcade club in Berry the other week. I was just chucking a name out there, but no one wants to see that. Yeah, okay. And I was playing the old six-player Konami X-Men arcade cabinet. Okay, and there were six of us. Yeah, <laughs> it was me, my girlfriend, uh, our friends, and their two kids. You guys were Tardis in it. So of course, <laughs> someone had to take Dazzler. You say that like it's a bad Because name. that lineup is Cyclops, Wolverine, Storm, okay. Colossus, yeah. Nightcrawler, and Dazzler. Okay, to be fair, Dazzler is the bottom of the pile in that lineup. 
Because it's from the but era where they were pop- trying to make Dazzler a thing. But she is a pop star who fires um, fireworks. I was trying to explain this to people about why she was so cool, but no one would understand me. She was going to have a but film. But Dazzler's really cool. She was going to be a multimedia franchise. Yeah, she was going to have a film where she was the main character and it was set in a crossover alternate dimension. Yeah. And Captain America, Spider-Man and someone else, I think maybe Storm, maybe were going to be in it as well. And it was going to be like a big thing. And it was a music movie and... Yeah, it fell apart because Canon got hold of it early, and yeah. then and then they never got around to making it, and obviously became more budgety and shitter. As I think time they went made by. a comic of that script, though. I think. Yeah, they may have done. Yeah, I think that was the, the and it was going to be a musical. I can't remember what it was they had attached to Bo the music for it. No, to the uh, music. Bo Derek was. Oh, I don't know. Bo Derek would have been a pretty cool dazzler. To be, I fair. think she. I think she was. Um. Oh my god! Wow! Deep, deep Marvel cuts, boys and girls. Dazzler. <laughs> But that's not all. Yeah, I, you know what? We've got we've got we've got a male giant talking head mm-hmm. robot led series. Mm-hmm. We've got a female led series. Hell, mm-hmm. we've got we've got a double act doing that series. Do you know who is marginalised here, Matt? Do you know who we need more of? Anthropomorphised animals, both of the uh, contract killer and private detective variety. Well, shit, son, I've got you covered. <laughs> what? Because the next two shows. Someone hand someone hand me my ski blanket from creators. Kevin Smith and Dave Wills. Yes. Howard the Duck. Bugger me sideways. Trapped in a world he never made. Bugger me sideways with a copy of Forbes. Howard <laughs> the Duck. And we're again. They we're should really this... bring Seth Green to voice him as well. They really should. They really should. But the thing is, we're at this point now where Howard the Duck is an exciting prospect. Howard the Duck. Thanks to hashtag Rehi James Gunn. Um, is now recognisable in pop culture again. Yeah. And not as just... Remember that weird movie George Lucas made <laughs> with that Power Howard! The Duck! <laughs> friend of mine who's, who's coming to pick me up after we record this morning, Phil, um, watches that movie at least once a month. It's... And loves it without any irony. It's a thing, man. Yeah. It's a thing. I think he might be broken. Yeah. And finally... Well, we knew that. We knew that all along. We're getting a brutally funny revenge saga... From Josh Gordon and Will Speck. This, you featuring know what? an assassin monkey <laughs> in a sweet suit. We're getting hit monkey. We're getting a hit monkey. Hit monkey. Hit monkey is getting a flipping series. I, I was looking at my shelf thinking, I'm sure I've got a hit monkey somewhere. And then they're all going to come hit, together in Hitmon- The Offenders. I've got hit monkey stories in a Deadpool thing up here, but in my long boxes, I have got a hit monkey one shot, like a. a, a, a uh, uh, bu- a bumper edition, like yes. big issue long shot. Yeah, yeah, I fucking love Hit Monkey. Yeah, I adore that because car- that character. I was I was introduced to that character during Daniel Way's Deadpool run. Yes, Hit Monkey just rocks up in a story, and you're like, wait, what is this? What? But if I remember correctly, he has teasers in the issues leading up to it, like you know the whole like epilogue, and you get a couple pages of an extra story. Yeah, and it was the, leading up to yeah. him tying into it, and it's like. What? For those wondering what the hell a hit monkey looks like, picture uh, I guess sort of like an albino baboon kind of thing. Like he's he's white. And I think he's gangly. a capuchin. He's a capuchin. Capuchin. Yeah, so, yeah, because he's white. He's, he's yeah. albino fur. His little long pink face in a black suit with black uh, black skinny tie because he's trendy. Yeah, if, if anything, he's trendy. It's if Agent Forty Two was a capuchin. Yeah, that's that's hit monkey. Doesn't talk. Nope, because he's a monkey. Most of the time isn't depicted with thought bubbles or speech bubbles. No, because he's a monkey. Because he's a monkey. But he's a monkey who gets the job done. God damn it. Is this going to be John Wick <laughs> with a monkey? I hope so. Can you imagine? Because these are on Hulu. They're yeah. not on Disney+. Plus, So that would seem to suggest a slightly more mature <clears throat> I mean, uh, Aqua Teen, Hunger Force, Helmer and uh, Viewers Universe creator. Yeah, doing Howard the Duck. Getting together to do Howard the Duck. Which yeah. has... Howard the Duck's had a Max series. So they've mm. done adult stuff with Howard giggity and, and those <laughs> Howard's done adult stuff with Howard yes and even Can, uh, Leo what's face did adult Leo stuff Thompson. with Howard yeah. uh, even those uh, <laughs> mm, even those early 70s uh, Howard the Duck books are, are uh, somewhat subversive I mean, what's the, the cover of the first one? Is him protecting like a damsel in a castle with a big sword as this thing advances from him? Maybe on him from a doorway, and she is scantily clad to fuck. And I know they it's did like a... this is not a normal I don't cartoony think, book. I don't think that's a, that's the first issue cover, but I think they definitely did some Frank Frazetta esque yeah cover stuff with it. 
I'm I'm just wondering if they're gonna bring in Doctor Bong. Oh yeah, they, they mentioned it in one of the. Oh, the things, yeah, I remember seeing that and going. The villainous and, Dr. Bong. Again, a character I was introduced to through Deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> like he appeared in Daniel Way's Deadpool. Yeah. That's how I got to know Dr. Bong. Yes. There's been a lot of love for these obscure ass characters and they're getting their due. <laughs> it's hilarious. Think about that though. There's certain characters. I mean, are they do it? There's certain characters that haven't been adapted yet at all. Do you know what I mean? There's certain, like, in, in terms of recent years, there's certain, like, big villains for superheroes and stuff that we have not seen the light of day Ooh. or have been watered down or recontextualized to be a bit more, a bit more sort of uh, normal. I hesitate to use that word because it doesn't sum it up. You know, Captain America fans, hey, guess what? Zemo, Baron Zemo is in a movie, but he's not Baron Zemo. He's, Helmut, he's still Helmut Zemo and he still has military background and he still hates Captain America, but he's not Baron Zemo. All right, okay. Oh, well, Daniel Brühl's great in this movie, still work. I'm fine, whatevs, you know. Hey, do you guys love um, the Mandarin? Well, we're not going to do the Mandarin exactly, but we're going to allude to the yeah. of power the Mandarin has, and we're going to suggest in a tie-in that maybe that Mandarin does exist out there somewhere. Maybe. Okay, fine. Hey, you guys love Modoc? Yep, well, we're giving him a show. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Hit Monkey. You this one's Monkey? For... He's getting a show. This one's for the seven Hit Monkey fans out there. Of which I am a proud member. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Who's next? That's the question. Um, Machine Man. I... Do you know what? Adapt Marvel Zombies 3. (laughs) Give me Machine Man going through dimensions fighting the Marvel Zombies. I would watch the hell Machine Man. That would take advantage of your slightly higher age rating Let's do Machine Man. Um, This is probably... they've got to do Marvel Zombies as an animated series. It wouldn't surprise me if they got this idea from Donald Glover's canned... Deadpool cartoon, maybe so they're they kind of need developing to have a that word angle. with Hulu about possibly seeing if they can shift rights and give Donald Glover mm. that thing because because that that leaked script unquote he put online, which he then deleted quite swiftly afterwards. Yes, um, was amazing, and it was it wasn't a leaked script; it was a he'd written basically. He he was throwing shade at Fox for canning the show by writing a 10 page <laughs> script and just posting it to Twitter specifically to do that did you, did you read it at the no, time? no 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 I'll have to dig it up it's so funny it's brilliantly done and the script mm. breaks the fourth wall to the reader in the same way that like the character does and he breaks into the script and things like that but it, it, it's him basically bitching to like it's like a horse or a camel or something Blech. just bitching to them the whole story about the cancellation but not directly yeah it's so well done nice oh god how if about... this works give Donald Glover an animated show to work on how about <clears throat> the Great Lakes Avengers oh god I'd watch that <laughs> I'd watch that complete with Squirrel Girl fuck yeah I'd watch that how about um give us the bar with no name and okay. do it like cheers okay and make it make your main stars like hey. really obscure fuckers like like um, Armadillo and Frogman. Mm. You know what I mean? And like make characters like that your main stars and your guest stars for the show. Like you know, cheers and have like, oh my god, it's such a buddy from that sitcom or such a buddy from that drama film. Oh my god, it's that A list celebrity coming just to play a character. Make that be the supervillains people have heard of. You know who I want to have some. Electro more... comes in for a drink. You're just like, oh my god, it's Electro. You know who I want to have some more appearances in media. And you may not know him because you've not met, you've not read this book. Whom? Uh, Senor Magico from David Walker in Sanford Green's Power Man and Iron Fist. Yeah, Senor Magico. He's the he's the I, master I, yeah. of street magic. Oh. <laughs> that's a fucking great idea. I um I'll find you a picture of Senor Magico and then we'll move on to the next topic. Um, Do we have to move on to the next topic? Oh, Senor Magico is pretty great. Exactly. Do we have to move on to the next topic? Uh, I, I, I'd rather stick with pretty great, man. That is Senor Magico <laughs> in his Empire State jumper with the uh, bum he's, bag slash fanny pack. He's dressed like a casual Doctor Strange. He even yeah. has, even has, but based on that little white tips in the hair. Oh my god, that's brilliant. Yeah. Senor Magico. Senor Magico. That is fantastic. Oh, that's really cool. Can we have some more Senor Magico, please? I'm up for that. Or oh, if we're not getting any more Netflix shows, let's have a um <laughs> Let's have a Power Man and Iron Fist <clears throat> Jendi Tatatowski cartoon. With Finn Jones and um Mike Coulter voicing them. With Mike Coulter so, voicing so th- at least. Oh, right. <laughs> I was going to say, just so we could get that that little flavour of, hey, this isn't MCU, but we're giving you a little taste of those versions you like. Yeah. 
here they are. Yeah. Enjoy them, you bastards. Can you imagine a Jessica yeah, Jones animated show? Oh, I'd love it. <laughs> it's I, like I'm so surprised that after DC's success in the late two thousand, kicking. I'm surprised after DC's success in the late 2000s, Marvel didn't attempt to do more animated stuff angled at an older audience. Yeah, they just never really... The animated one's a thing. I was going through DVDs on eBay in the other day. Yeah. If anyone's interested, they'll be up for about a quid each, basically, and you yeah. can bulk order them. Because um, it's just copies of stuff that we when, we, when my and my wife's collection merged, we're like, well, we don't need that, we don't need that, we don't need that, we don't need that. And then there was something where we just upgraded to Blu-ray since we've got features and have decided to sell. Um, but amongst Smart. them is Young Avengers... No, not Young Avengers. I never bought that one, sorry. Um, Ultimates. Yes. Ultimate Aven- oh, Ultimate Avengers, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Ultimate Avengers 2. Um, oh, which other ones have I put down? I think I've, I think I've put... No, I, I... They're really unmemorable, apart from Hulk Versus, which works because it's too distinct. Sh- the introduction of Nolan North as Deadpool. I watched some Planet Hulk and I was like, this is... But I think that's just because it fits nicely into a world I like so it's a fun it's weird like Riddler's recast with a dude from one of the CW shows and he's fine because it'll be something to do with Warner Brothers and like we've got a, you know we've got a thing of these stars the same way that when it's the animated it's slightly different but it's the same art style Yeah. but it's random lady from Big Bang Theory in the show Batman and Nightwing sound like they did because it's the same voice actors but it's like well, doesn't case, even look that great or in this case a new servo and stripping out <sighs> look terrible no it doesn't look terrible it doesn't look it's a very very well edited tragedy covered in a sheet and there's something protruding in the middle of it you see orbital for the buddy doll um uh, you were familiar with the new uh, i think i've seen the first one but you you hadn't binged the the fuckers no there's one i absolutely adore but not just that it's one that is still going on yeah. Um, they made the smart decision a few years ago Don Mancini the creator to be like I want to carry on this story but Universal who own the rights to Chucky because that's the distinction here Universal own the rights to Chucky and that story um, weren't willing to make a new theatrical movie so Don Mancini went alright here's an idea for you give me a budget of five million dollars total and that's including marketing for this yeah and I will go away and I'll make a straight to DVD, straight to VOD, straight to Blu-ray film, carrying on the series. Uh, and, you know, guarantee I guarantee you will get at least, you know, your five million back. Yeah. And Universe went, all right. And in 2013, we got Curse of Chucky and it was fucking great. Yeah, it's Curse a Chucky's really, really good. good, creepy really horror good. movie set in a house over the course of a couple of days. Really spooky, plays on plays on you knowing the story already, but also from the top it looks like it could be a reboot. Like it, it up until about the, the sixty minute mark, there is no indication that is a, it is a direct continuation of the previous movies. Hmm. And then you're like, oh, it is tied in. It is a sixth one. This is great, <laughs> and it's really really good. And it made over thirty million in the first month. So yeah. Universal it did went, all right. Do you want to do this again, Don? And it Don went, did all yeah. right. Because Charles Play and Chucky have a fan base. There are obviously people who just know him as, you know, oh my god, Chucky, I love Chucky, that's great. Those movies There's a great. significant amount of overlap with the Hitmonkey fan base. <laughs> Crossover. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I freaking adore those movies and I adore that character. Um, so, you know, they're out there. And Don went, well, that, those people, we don't have to fill a cinema with a bunch of people who might not be fans. Yeah. We just have to make something for the fans to buy. And it got new fans, and it made a lot of money. And they made Cult of Chucky uh, three years later, or uh, four years later, it came out. Um, and it did really well. And again, weird film, really fucked up. D- D- dives into the voodoo like none of the films had before. Because mm. the premise of Charles Blay is a serial killer who's about to die uses voodoo. Voodoo. Hi, we're voodoo? in weird territory. He, you do. Oh. Okay. Do what? Remind me of Charles Play. Hey. To transfer his body into the, transfer his soul into the nearest body of which at the time is a good guy doll. He's yeah. in a toy store and it's into a good guy doll which is then eventually finds its way into the Barkley household and uh, Karen Barkley's son Andy really like, you know, attaches himself to the doll because he's six because he would. And then people start dying around them. And Karen learns that Chucky is alive, possessed by the serial killer Charles Lee Ray. 
and the reason he's bumping people off and staying close to Andy is because it turns out the only way he can break the curse of being stuck in that doll is if he transfers himself into the first person he revealed himself to. We really need to Andy. work out how to do summaries shorter. Yeah. That's why our episodes are like an hour and a, and yeah. a two and a half hours long. Possessed doll. Go to take over kid. There we go. That's all, and shoe. that's all you needed. The key that's words, all you needed. The key word's voodoo. Uh, this new movie is owned by is coming out from Orion Pictures. Yes. Uh, and I love how they say from the from the the people who brought you it. No, it's from one of the producers of it. It's not from any of the creative team of it. No, not as far as I can um, tell. Oh, Seth Graham Smith is a co-writer on it, so it's from one of the co-writers of it. Uh, I don't think he is. He's a producer. Oh, well, there you go. Um, it's Tyler Burton Smith is the, is screenplay based on characters created by Don Mancini. Yeah. Now, the reason this is gross, MGM owned the rights to Child's Play, the first film. Yes. Um, Don Mancini and Universal own the rights to all of the things associated to Chucky. Yes. Everything about it. But through a technicality, the first movie is a shared rights thing with MGM. Now, MGM isn't a solid studio anymore. They work through other studios. Yeah, because they went severely under yeah so like the Bond movies you'll see the MGM logo on the Bond movies but they distribute and create the movies through Sony for example etc 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 in this case it's Orion Pictures and Orion Pictures are making Child's Play so Child's Play will have Chucky and it will have Andy and it will have Karen Barkley and it it has Detective Mike Norris in it Um, and the title Child's Play yes that is it that is all it is allowed to share so they've obviously gone, well, we want to capitalise on this name we've got. And the general public may not be aware that the series is ongoing. So much so that it continues later this year as... They're probably going to change the title of this now. Yeah. Child's Play, a sci-fi TV series. Yes. Which is continuing the films. Yes. Um, complete with Don Mancini on board. The Channel Zero show Helmer is running it and is the showrunner. Um, Brad Dourif is reprising his role as Charles Lee Ray and Chucky. Yes. Fiona Dourif and Jennifer Tilly are signed on. Yes. So that series is continuing. Alex Vincent? Uh, quite possibly. Mm. Uh, although I think his fate is left ambiguous at the end of Cult. It'll, it'll pop up again. He's locked in the asylum when it blows up. So, yeah, he, he will probably be alive. Does his hand blow up? I completely forgot that. Oh, no, it doesn't blow up. No, they. Oh, no. No, it doesn't blow up. I'm misremembering. Um, the cops arrive and he's like the only human suspect in the building. Oh, right, 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 right. Because um, there's that creepy theme from the new ones. Like, yes. Um, which is great. And they introduced it in Curse because it's that gorgeous shot at the beginning where the camera's just panning around the doll still and you see in the days go by and the, 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 the mum and the wake and everything in the background. Oh, God, I love those two movies. Um so I was, he- I was hesitant for Charles Play, but I'm a comic book fan. I do yes. like, you know, like, oh, it's an alternate take. In the post today, I've got Batman White Knight arriving, the book that asks, what if the Joker turned good one day? What if the Joker... And became a po- politician and fucked Batman up, like, through politics. It's like, okay. What if the Joker... Yeah, I, I believe in this book, it even suggests that there are two Harley Quinns. And there always have been. There was the original, and the one we're seeing in Suicide Squad you is actually Impersonator. need to read... You need to watch the... Back issues. I will I after I've after I've read it. I'm going to read it. For, that's, I saw it and I was like, "That's the final straw." I've wanted to read this for a while. It keeps coming with my suggestions because it's a recent. That story one. fucking goes places, man. Yeah. So I was like, I want to read it before I watch the back issues. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, I like alternate takes on things, but th- this one's a bit disgusting because Don Mancini was approached about six years ago by whoever had it then. It wasn't Orion Pictures, but whoever owned the franchise, MGM representative wise, said. We want to remake Charles Play. Are you in? And he went, I don't want... No. No. Like, I, let's well, not. I'm carrying on the series over here and I'm quite happy to we do need that. Because it. it's my baby. Like, he's written every one of them. <laughs> it's my baby. And they've gone, okay, we respect that. Um, we might be in touch. And then apparently a couple of years ago, they got in touch again and said, hi, last chance. Would you like to help us out with something? This is the last time we're going to ask you. We won't bother you after this. And he went, no. And they went, fine. And then they greenlit this. Yeah. So Sounds right. uh, it's gross. It's 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 there are different interpretations, but when the original dude is out there, I can't enjoy this too much knowing that. Yeah, I mean that's the thing for me. It's not I'm not averse to remakes, the yeah. idea of remakes. I don't think that if, anything if there is, is if there is a spin that is fresh or a better way of telling the story, I'm open. Well it's not even that. I don't think there's anything that's so sacred that you can't remake it. 
I just think it's a bit pointless. Yeah. With, with the fact that this series is the franchise is still continuing, to remake the first one just seems a little pointless. Especially because the original capitalised on a period in American history <laughs> history, be like, you know, the late eighties, where consumer culture is you know, it's America. Um but Cabbage Patch Kids and things like that are massive. The in big the toy of every Christmas, yeah. So of course you make a horror film where something like that is actually a murderer, and you make it extra creepy. In the original version, it was it was like a a totem possession thing. Yeah. And Andy was the murderer, and the doll was like the conduit, and all this. That was Domantini's original script, and then it was changed and tweaked, and they went for what they went for. Yeah. And then he embraced it fully. Yes. And, and decided, well, if this is my, if these are my toys in the toy box. Here's how I'm going to play with them. And he went on to write two and three and Bride and Seed and, and yes. Curse and Cult. Um, and he does an amazing job with them. And there's a reason those characters are so endearing and people enjoy them. Um, but uh, when it comes to this, the Chucky films later on work because people go, oh my God, that's one of those old dolls. Yes. In terms of the context of In World. Yeah. Kids these days don't really younger. Well, oh, well, kids old enough to be like Andy's age, six, seven from the original, don't really play with stuff like that in a way where people look at it and go, "Oh yeah, I see that all the time." We're in a world where that water is a lot more muddied. I think that's why they're going with the idea of it being an, an interactive AI. electronic toy. Mm. Um, I but then mm. the kid in this trailer is about twelve. Yeah. Now I think they've got an angle on that. I think the reason they've cast Aubrey Plaza is because they've cast somebody as Karen is because it's someone who obviously, you know, can deliver things with a great sense of humour as yeah. well as, as drama. And th- it means they're trying to sort of... They've either cast somebody who can deftly handle a situation which could be laughable if done wrong. Yes. I think this is a story... I'm just presuming there's no clues about this in any of the synopsis for this movie, but I'm presuming that Andy's father has possibly died or moved on or left in a, in a way that has left Andy feeling quite uncomfortable and rejected and, and lost in a bit. He doesn't know who quite who he is. Maybe he doesn't make friends because he feels like he's part of a you know a family that's broken down or something like that rampant speculation yeah. based so, on absolutely nothing well we based know. based on the fact that a kid of around Fair 10 enough. plus in that movie is being given a doll technologically advanced or not is being given a doll to yes. play with yes, i yes, think yes. it's more a therapy thing yeah maybe. and, and the kazlan tr- uh, infomercial that came out before the trailer did as a teaser trailer for the trailer sort of talks about how like helping people be the best people they can be because we all need a friend yes and it's like okay like i think i think this doll is a tra- i think it's a trauma thing i think this older kid is getting this doll is basically like a hey like maybe if he's just got this thing by his side that can talk back to him he might open up a bit more yes so that's a disturbing thing because what makes the original creepy as well is the fact that it's a grown man whispering things to a kid yeah yeah. And, you know, taunting him and being creepy. Like, that's creepy. And being his friend. And we see it in Curse. Like, Curse is the first movie where we get to see it. It happens in Child's Play 3 as well, but Tyler is fucking thick. <laughs> <laughs> like, Tyler is really yes. thick in Child's Play 3. But but with uh, with um, Alice in Curse of Chucky, it, you get that set. I mean, even, they even show one of those moments, the first moments. I'm like, Chucky, I'm scared. That first moment where he talks to the movie, he just starts laughing. He goes, you fucking should be. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yes. But anyway, um, having it be an AI, fine, whatever. But basically we're doing, I can't remember who called it this, but someone online called it this. I thought it was amazing. Double toast. The double toasted guys called it Tiny Terminator. Yeah, I it's, suppose. It's Tiny Terminator. Yeah, but the thing is, we don't know that yet, do we? From the basic surface premise, it's that's what it's giving us. All we know is that the like people are going, oh, it's not, it's not a haunted doll. It's a, it's a, it's a, a mechanic. It's an electronics thing. We don't know yet. We've not seen enough of it. So mm. let's just back off on that and but just I, concentrate I on the fact that this is a pointless remake and not yeah. try and pick yeah, it no. apart for plot stuff that we don't know anything about yet. The the reason that book irks me though is. Fine, give me an alternate take on Charles Play. I'm going to feel dirty if Don's not involved in some way. I am. It's because it's, it's his baby and it feels weird. But, I just, they took away the one thing that kind of made it unique. We don't know if they have, though. 
on the surface. And I would, but I, I wouldn't be. What do you mean on the surface? Like, it's a plot twist. I know exactly. Exactly. So we don't know everything if we have. No, everything they're telling us is this isn't the same as the last one. So that alone's making mm. me go, I am less. Sick. Well, it is like everything they're telling us so far is tech going horribly wrong, uh, and that's the synopsis, the official synopsis, and everything they've put out. This is what they're presenting to us, is what I mean. So they've taken away an element immediately that we know of, or at least that they're proud to pretend that made the originals unique. I don't know. I think this is the wrong hill to die on, man. I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I'd never die on this hill. I'm just saying from what press stuff they put out, I'm like, so it's a robot doll. Well, yeah, they're not going to go, uh, oh, and it's a voodoo thing if, because they're trying to, pres- of course, but also, they're trying to pres- if they are doing yeah. that again, which they probably are. But wouldn't that be a cheap twist? As a, as someone who's he- seen the original, wouldn't that be a really cheap twist? Yes, but this isn't for people who've seen the original. That's what you've got to remember. You say that, they're only, they're only making it to cash in on the name. Yeah, but so how many, it, it is for to a degree. Yeah, for well, people who are not know the original, who are going to see this who are like teenagers, eighteen now, have mm. seen the original Charles play. No, but they'll be aware of Chucky. Yeah, but they're not going to they use his in... name in the trailer because they're like they're 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 expecting cultural osmosis to sell tickets. Exactly, yeah. but they've not seen the original Charles play, so they might not know the twist. Mm. True, but, but, then again, even... but then again, what a boring twist that would be. <laughs> if you've oh, seen the original voodoo, you're well, like, this isn't... Huh? yes, but. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's a pointless remake. I just I don't, yeah. don't understand the ire There's, that's coming from that. Like, let's, we, well, let's, me, let's pick this apart it. <laughs> for its story before it's even out, and we know what the story is. You know what it is? I can't. I can't help myself. It's because I'm. So, it's because I'm so ingrained in that stuff. I can't help just, myself, but have filters up. But that's what podcasts like this are for. for yes. Pointless conjecture. Yes. And and filth. Although and, there's one uh, thing we know that isn't pointless. Getting worked up about. Oh. Fucking Will Smith's genie man. Oh Jesus wept. Aladdin's coming out in a couple of months, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen the ge- we've seen you the genie. <laughs> we've seen you the genie. It's fucking is ugly. It, is it the first Disney remake coming out this year? Or yeah, is Lion King coming out so. first? No, Lion King's out in summer. Yeah, Lion Aladdin, King. Lion King, and then what else is this year? Oh, Dumbo. Oh no, Dumbo. Dumbo. Oh, first, Dumbo's actually. first. Dumbo's first, then Aladdin. That's yeah, we it. saw a trailer for that, and <laughs> this is what we think of Dumbo. We saw a trailer for it in front of uh, Lego Movie Lego 2. Movie Two, and we completely forgot about it. <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> I ah uh, right. So Aladdin, Jafar. Yes. Context is important, but based on what they're mm-hmm. presenting to us, it sounds like his performance is bland as fuck. Oh, just again based on what they're presenting. Yeah. The, the, fir- the first we've heard of Jafar is your life begins today. It's just like what? no, I get what he's doing. He's doing he's doing uh, sneaky and sinister. He's just not he's not doing the theatrics. Cause... And we're not seeing it. We're also not seeing it. We never see him speak. That's we hear true. it in VO, but it's just so sort of like. That's the read you're going for. You know, you can, you know, you can like in ADR re record certain lines just for the trailer. People do that just so yeah, that the atmosphere is. That's of... true. And also, it's weird that the orchestral song they've gone for is Friend Like Me. Da, da, da. Yeah, that's because. Da, da. The one, it's song... the one everybody knows. This, well, I, no, I would argue everyone knows every fucking song. Well, that. yeah. <laughs> But like friend like me is not the one that needs to be orchestral and no. sweeping. It's, it's got a good one. hook. That's why they chose it. Yeah. Um, Naomi Scott looks like a real life Jasmine. I guess. Uh, I read into it. They're going to acknowledge her. Um, uh, her mother is going to suggest it to have been from India, to account for the fact that uh, Naomi Scott is um, half British, half Indian, instead of sort of in that area. And they're also talking about how Agrabah, which is a fictional city, but it's based within a real area in the world. They're going to make Agrabah basically the centre of the Silk Road. So it is a mishmash of cultures from around like Asia and South yeah, Asia. That's pretty and cool. So that's a good idea. But um, yeah. Also, Disney have released an official statement in regards to the extras who were being uh, darkened. It wasn't a lot of them. And it was literally in instances where they could not uh, get casting people to fill in those roles because it was... Uh, animal wranglers, stuntmen, things like that hidden within the set or within the pieces. So when you hear that, you're like, that's less gross. Yeah, but still. Yeah, it depends. Well, it depends. It's like you can shoot around them. <laughs> like you don't have to yeah. darken them up. Now, in an instance yeah. where maybe like someone's handling like a snake and you need the wrangler in shot, for example, you need them near, but really close by. Listen. You frame it a certain way, you have them turned away from the camera yeah. in the crowd scenes. Yeah. Or you just, if this is going to be like an amalgam of cultures in the Silk Road, you just let them be white and yeah. they're a random white person in that scene. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, but like, anyway, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not as mm. egregious as what was suggested, but still it's like, yeah, you could have, mm, you could have 
Yeah, Disney, you could have done that differently. But it's also a thing of, oh yeah, there weren't enough people of this ethnicity in this job. It's like, did you look? <laughs> you do know that other countries Pop- have massive movie industries, right? They possibly did. It may just be that they were filming on site in one of the sound stages and not on location. Yeah, you get some Asian dudes in from like the Bollywood industry or something. Yeah, it's it's an odd. But anyway, point, point is... They do all sorts of genre is, movies. All of the controversies around this movie pale in comparison to the real colorization oh, moment. fuck me. Sideways. Have you seen the Twitter video? Of somebody whose caption is, quick, we have 15 minutes to this teaser trailer. Yeah. And in 15 minutes, I- albeit this person is very skilled at visual effects, obviously, on their computer. Yeah. But in 15 minutes, they take a CGI Will Smith face, they take a CGI, like, random orc or warrior body or whatever, they colour it differently, they put his face on it, and they give it the basic animation of what he does in mm. that shot in the trailer. And it is, apart from obviously the face moving, not moving in this version, it's like, yeah. Uncanny Valley! I would oh. like to think that this is unfinished effects. But why would you put them in a trailer? Because they haven't got anything finished yet. <laughs> why would you put that in a trailer? Because... Show something else. I think this it might be It doesn't look mocap. This that's is... the thing that's creepy about it. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't look mocap. It, it looks like... It looks like they've filmed Will Smith's face and then put it on this genie. He's got the floaty head thing going on. Yes. And not in a way um, where, it look, where it makes sense, because he's only floaty and gassy yeah, hey, from the waist down. I always whereas, gas for the waist down. Whereas from the, the you know, the, the, the waist up, he's solid. So it, it looks disjointed. It's... Donna Noble has left the library. Donna Noble has been saved. It looks like that to me. The face is a separate thing. Yeah. It's so weird. It's a bad effect, and hopefully he's not going to be like that for the whole movie. Well, I, Not that the I, other I think, I think the images better. of him we've seen so far suggest that he's going to spend the majority of the movie looking. I think they've referred to it somewhere in the press as his human disguise. Oh yeah. So I think how we've seen him before this is what he's going to look like for the majority of the movie. I would have rather him look like that for all of it. Yeah, you don't. Need and him maybe when though. he first emerges, you sort of have like that silhouette of the thingy, and then he settles into that form. That'd be fine because yeah. at least then you'd be like, oh, it's a homage to what or, the genie looks like. Like if you're going to do it, save it for the finale. Yeah. But don't... Well, no, because then it might be a oh, oh no. Yeah, but better that, <laughs> better that than stick it in your trailer and be like, oh, this is because people are not positive about this. No. I haven't seen anybody saying anything nice I've seen, about I've seen, this. The only nice thing I've seen have been people going, it's the genie and Will Smith playing him. Oh my god, my childhood, I can't wait. Which is what Disney relying on. Yeah. So those people, can you go see the movie on the second weekend? Yeah. So that. We can give them the message <laughs> that we don't want this. We don't want this. We don't want live action remakes of. Again, I'm not against who rem- remakes. Who remembers Beauty and the Beast from 2017 in like a. Oh my god, I love that movie. I haven't seen that no. feedback for it ever. I've seen people go, I, Yeah, I saw it. It was, it was alright, wasn't it? It's like, no, it wasn't. I think, again, I'm not against remakes uh, on a. Like a uh, Moral Obviously, Al- Aladdin is no not comparable to this at all. Aladdin's a far better movie, but in live action. No, I think he used a couple of images from it, but yeah, yeah, as like on as homage. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like in stories and adapt them as many ways as you want. And if you want to allude to the Aladdin that came before, I still think the only Disney remake that's the relationships you remember from our version, and we're going to use some of the musical motifs in there. But crucially, the biggest King, but Lion King looks so. But again, it's kind of Lion King's doing what Beauty and the Beast did, and what Aladdin's doing, and what. Um, uh, what uh, Hunchback is now doing because that's gone into production no oh, fucking hell they're using the songs of the original and, and, and the, the people who wrote songs for like you know Wicked or whatever to work on this one and we've got Alan Menken teamed up with the guys who wrote the songs for flipping um, did the other Broadway musical for this one and it's just like I don't care hmm. that version exists now again that version exists I can mean, go back to it forever but it will always be better. <laughs> like, it will always be better. And that's why I'm sad that the second Jungle Book production has halted. Because Favreau got put on Lion King. Because that was their chance to go, yeah. right, we're going to do stuff that you've not seen before. Yeah. With familiar characters. Do you think they're sign- kind of doing that with Dumbo? Well, I mean, Dumbo, you, again, Dumbo, it's live action Dumbo. Yeah, but how does that translate to live action? Well, we just recontextualize it and make it about the humans. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, Dumbo doesn't seem to speak. Yeah, in the and, and the Pink Elephants on Parade appears to be a circus act made of bubbles instead yeah. of an elephant getting blind drunk with a mouse. Mm. You know, wonderful imagery that is best suited to animation! Well, look. 
I think we Give me can Pinocchio. Agree. Give me Pinocchio. I'll happily watch that live remade live action. Hibo do Toro should have been getting a live action Pinocchio made for years. But, but not the Disney one. I think he's doing it with Netflix. Oh yeah, maybe. it's been green lit, but it's not in production uh, yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, because he's doing he's doing everything. I looked through Disney's uh, with Lucy the other day. We looked through Disney's upcoming slate to see how many more of these things oh, are on the way. Oh, Lady oh. and the Tramp is coming out either later this year or start of next year. Oh fuck me! As one of the um, tent poles of the opening of the Disney Plus app. Oh what? Um. So yeah, that's happening. Um, cool. Not. Which is gross. Cool. Uh, Lady in the Truck. Because again, live action, what? Uh, Cruella is in development. Yeah. Because, you know, let's humanise the lady who wants to gut and wear dogs. Yeah, live action 101 Dalmatians prequel. Just, yeah. It's just not... Like, uh, Punchback, why? piss off. Hunchback is gorgeous. Leave it be. Also, well, Hunchback is also incredibly problematic. Well, the, again, it depends on how you tell it, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it's it's going to be difficult. To the, tell Dis- the Disney one's biggest mistake was mm. their characterization of traveling folk in some places, yeah. not in all, but in some. Uh, if you did it live action, you could tell you could tell a more nuanced version of that, and you could really focus on the actual death, despair, and inhumanity that was being brought to people. You could do that, but then if they also fucking make the CGI gargoyles talk, they're kind of shitting on that, really. It's yeah. it's unless they do it the way that it should have been fucking done and then not be real live and they're all in his head, which the animated movie sort of suggests up until the point where one of them starts harassing a goat. Anyway, <laughs> point is, I think you've got a lot of pent up frustration about this. I though. love Hunchback of Notre Dame, but those fucking gargoyles and their song, which is just a a friend like me fill in, which the nineties Disney is full of after Aladdin. Every talking psychic character at some point gets a, an imaginary scenario musical number. It's really weird. Even into the straight to DVD and video ones that starts happening. Like Rafiki gets Inupendi in Lion King 2, which is like, why is this happening? <laughs> why is this happening? <laughs> I don't understand. You don't have to. Just <sighs> listen. If it's good, watch it. If it isn't, don't. Do you know what? I I wish that everything was awesome, Matt. I wish everything was cool and part of a team. Alright? <laughs> but everything's not awesome, it's Matt. Not- um, but you know, Lego Movie 2 was awesome it was pretty damn cool if you want to know our spoiler free thoughts on the Lego Movie 2 there's a YouTube video go watch it it's 10 minutes it's us doing this but you can see us mm, you poor bastard yeah Ooh. and that's at the spank bank hey the, the, the one that you cry over <laughs> the one that you, the one where you weep yeah. while you're doing it but speaking of weeping while we're doing it yes Lego Movie 2 um, yes Spoilers abound, ladies and gents. It's Lego Movie, so don't expect big like revelations. Yeah. If you if you're not fussed about spoilers too much, don't don't worry about but it. If you are fussed about spoilers, go see it because it's great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We've said um, it's great. What, what, what do you want to say? It's it's more great. It's greater. Let's give our basic thoughts for those who haven't seen the video yet. Um, it's the turds who should watch it. Um, it's really good. It's got some nice themes. It mm. builds on the themes of the original. It accounts for the five years that have passed in the maturation of its audience yeah. and in its characters. Yes, which is very nicely um, done. Because and... it is very much the second part. It carries on directly is... from the end of the yeah, first one. It is quite literally and the then we part. time skip yes. and, and catch up to present day. It's very good. What more can I say? There's a stepping on Lego joke in a Lego movie. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Hmm... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> mm. All we have left is original Aquaman and a Disney knockoff. Hello, I'm Kerry Bobbins. <laughs> Whatever it was. <laughs> Would you care for a spoonful of salt to help with this situation? No, no, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, thank you. Lego Movie 2 is about um, the invading force of the Sistar system. And how it's taken over over tin and... Uh, Destroyed Bricksburg. And it, which is now Apocalypseburg. Yeah, because it's grown up and gritty. Yeah, which it keeps it keeps talking about. And it keeps brooding. It's it keeps brooding conflating existence. grown up and gritty. Which I think is a great example of Warner Brothers being... Unusually self-aware. Well, at least the Warner Animation Group being unusually self-aware. Because this feels like a film where they just set Lorna Miller loose and didn't get in the way... There doesn't seem to be any sort of... It feels like they had a lot of freedom on this. Yeah. Because it does go all over the place. And is um, very smart about the way it references things, shouts things out. Mm. Um, 
and generally entertains the whole family. It's truly a universal movie. Not in that just it's suitable for kids. It is suitable for everyone. There's no gatekeeping here. It's, this is everyone's film. This is for everyone to share. I mean, even sight gags, there's things in there kids are never going to get in a million flipping years. Oh, yeah, just but they're away. really smart. Yeah. It's a <laughs> gorgeous looking movie. There's so much stuff going on. As has been the case with all these Lego movies, but they just keep refining that as they, as they do more of them. Because it's from told from the point of view of a child as well. Well, b- because it is told with a child being the driving force behind everything that's yes. happening. Yes. The terminology the characters use, and especially afterwards, thinking back to which kid was playing which scene, the stuff that the characters say in those scenes changes slightly. Mm. When the girl's playing with the toys, when the sister's playing with them primarily, that's yes. when the characters are saying things like totes and things like that. And there's a bit where uh, Queen uh, whatever a wannabe straight up says to Batman when she's dismissing him, she just goes, mm, unsubscribed. Yeah. You're like, Oh, it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's also really clever because the young girl was playing with them at that point. There is lots of... The young of... girl who probably watches a shit ton of social media influences. And there's lots of teen pop playing off a uh, smart device. Yeah. As, oh, a, as a major plot point. We're in spoilers now, aren't we? Oh, okay, yeah, spoil yeah. away. Um, so, it really smartly has, I think you pointed this out, has an evolution of... When you first see the effects of the sister Bianca playing with the I kid, think so yes, uh, yeah, her name's on the door. It's Bianca. I can't remember what the kid's name is, though. The boy's name is. Um, when you first see her stuff start to interact with his within the fiction of the Lego movie, yeah, um, it's like crude Duplo, Duplo uh, creations with a toddler's voice, and then <laughs> and then hello, hello, and then you see them evolve into the sort of modern Lego Friends stuff. Uh, the Stephanie Beatrice character, General Mayhem, is has got the Lego Friends body shape. And that body shape pops up a lot through a lot of the background characters in the Sistar system. Um, it's... It brings in so much more diversity uh, of, of colour and design and style... Uh, than the original and it just expands the palette and the visual palette of well, that film that's the thing that first one was very imaginative but yeah. it, it, I remember I remember saying to you immediately after we saw it like that, the, the dog fight at the beginning like, yeah. just the, and, and later on there's, there's the, the, the sequence on land the race the Mad Max style yeah. car chase at the start and then the, the air sequence later on the weaponry yeah and again I, I, weaponry almost feels like the wrong word because it's not like you know violent at all but it's just like this is so elaborate and imaginative yeah. like these are, this is from the mind of a kid or in this case the mind of a bunch of childlike adults who are making a movie going yeah. fuck it let's do it but put it, it is, in there it is like all the stuff with um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like those things explode into into, into luminous pink bricks yeah because again every frame is some of that they have built to see if it works um Oh, it's beautiful. It's, it be- beautiful. it's beautiful the way they do it. I'm trying to think. Like there was one, there was one gag in that opening car chase, which was just so beautifully executed. Is it the uh, indicator that was in the train? That was pretty great. That was pretty fun. It's like, it's like they know every move. Weird, huh? Weird, huh? You see him putting his indicator on every time he turns. So good. Um, oh god, it's it's the couple having an argument then when their vehicles like picked apart. Oh my god, there was that gag at the beginning where he's like they're all charging forward and she's like whipping the ho- like one's whipping the other and he's like you, you don't have to keep doing that now, Sharon. And she's like <laughs> yeah. It's like oh my god, <laughs> the Mad Max style designs in that scene. There's people with like a panda head mask. Yep. There's a panda mask. Yep. It's not a panda head. It's a panda head. You can see their little Lego eyes poking out of holes. It's like this is. Weird. Surfer Jake has become Chainsaw Jake. <laughs> um, and then later on he becomes... Um, I can't remember what he does later it's, on. It's like Purgatory Jake. Purgatory, Purgatory yeah. Jake, yeah. <laughs> um, as they all go into the... Uh... Good morning, sewer babies. Which are the sewer babies from the first one? Yeah. There were sewer babies. They just weren't going in chainsaws. Uh, so the the Armageddon, oh, Armageddon comes That's and puts them into the done. bin of storage. Yeah. Which is just... Oh, God. It took me until about halfway through the movie to get Armageddon. Well, when I first heard it, I was like, Armageddon. Did they just say that wrong? And then, like, yeah. oh, Armageddon. I was like, Is it just a kid misremembering what the word is? Yeah. But it's like, No, it's literally the impending thing of mum's going to come and tell yeah, the yeah. toys away. And then mum turns up and it's Maya Rudolph, and you're like, Oh, yay! Yay, Maya Rudolph, yay! And then she steps on Lego. Yeah, and it's twice. Great. It's funny. Gosh, which is just like, I'm, I'm, 
I'm, I'm, to... I'm, bre- I'm breathing because I'm, 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 I'm tricking myself into thinking it gets rid of the pain. <sighs> uh, okay. Yeah. And steps on it again. She's like, mm, that, that childbirth here? <laughs> Close, so close. She's <laughs> like great. brilliant, and the two kid actors are great as well. They're really, really good. Um, uh, again, a lot of story, a lot of storytelling, like... not through dialogue, just yeah. through their reactions, and, and yeah, oh god. Uh, if we're going to talk about, let's talk about new characters. Okay. Uh, let's talk about little subtle ones first, tiny ones. Banana peel, fucking hell. Because uh... they're based again on like he's a mi- he's a mishmash toy, isn't he? The idea yes. is just spare bits making fruit and veg and whatnot. And, Yes. Anthropomorphic food. But uh it's that whole it's like I've got one here actually. It's the eyes from like the brickheads. So it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. these spare pieces. I've seen them in um he, he's a spare piece from the uh he's over here, the little ba- like a Batman movie Robin. Uh, yes. Uh, I've yeah. seen them on a I've got uh a few of the kids that I know have got um the the, the Lego Ideas sets. Yeah. Where you can just build like a bunch of... And they've got loads of like those eye studs in them. Yeah. For all the different kind of things. They're really cool. Friend of the show, Billy Tracy, has made a yeah. uh, ninth Doctor and a 13th Doctor out of, out of Brickhead's kits. Yeah. Um, they're very good. Oh, um, Banana <laughs> is Ben Schwartz. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> oh my God, I love that. I love going back and finding out stuff like that. Banana. Uh, Richard Ayoade is the ice cream. Yes. Um, Noel Fielding is the non-threatening fashion glitty, glittery vampire. Balthazar. Balthazar, which is great. So the real grumpy one. Bush fans get a couple Bush ca- Bush alumni yeah. in here, which is quite nice. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, again, just all those little side parts, funny as hell. Again, the expanded cast are just goofing around, but you know it's nice to hear Nick Offerman. And, um... Nick Offerman doesn't sound like Nick Offerman. Yeah, he's, in the first um, one I thought it was Mike Myers. The voice he's putting on sounds yeah. kind of like Mike yeah. Myers. It's really weird. Uh, Charlie Day is Benny the Spaceman. Charlie Day is Benny the Spaceman. Space, space Alison Brie. Alison Brie's Unikitty. Unikitty. Which is hilarious. Unikitty's very, had, very good. Unikitty's had a whole existence outside of these films since. It's been an animated show. Brilliant. That isn't, isn't distinctly Lego based at all. So it's one of those where Lego gone like, well, we own this now. Let's make it into an animated series. Yeah. And retroactively turn it into a Lego franchise. <laughs> like, well done, guys. Well done. Um, yes. But yeah, it, it's so all these guys returning are great. Our central cast are pretty damn great. Again, especially Elizabeth Banks. Shout out going to Elizabeth Banks because she's bloody good in both. She is them, really as, good. In as this. Lucy, a.k.a. Wild Style. Um, I made an, a joke at the very top of this podcast about being slightly grossed out by Chris Pratt's... Yeah. Uh, messages of unity in this movie even though it's not Chris Pratt it's Emmett and it is an, he's an actor being paid to do a role but it seems like he believes in this stuff at the same time in real life his religious practices being called into question showing he doesn't really believe in equality between human beings specifically yes. based on their sexual preferences so it's not a good look scummy but he does as a performance an undeniably really damn good job in this movie as Emmett again who is really charming and likeable and lovable character yes just like he was last time um but he also doubles up as Rex Danger Vest Rex Danger Vest with a with a spaceship shit like a fist yeah and a crew made of raptors which again was probably a nod yeah to they they, they reference a lot of um uh, Chris Pratt's uh, recent filmography. Recent roles. You got yeah. you got the uh, the archaeologist, which is uh, Peter Starlord. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Galaxy defending archaeologist, cowboy, which is Magnificent Seven. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. the Raptor trainer, which is Jurassic World. Yeah. Uh, and Dave, he had Nick, a Rick... chiseled jawline that was hidden under baby fat. Yes. That was it. <laughs> um, Danger Vest is probably the best character. No, no, no. Queen, Queen whatever one I'll be is the best character, but. Yes. Um, He's 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 definitely the most interesting character I think introduced to this in terms of his storyline because we're well into spoilers, ladies and gentlemen. He's the surprise villain of the movie, and the film's a time travel film. Um, yes, in an alternate timeline, he Back to the Future kind of way, right down to the dad having. I thought it was really cool. His ship is his ship is made from cannibalized Lego sets that were time machines. Yes. And it shows that as a separate shelf in the basement yes. near the window out of the reach of the kids, implying the dad's a massive sci-fi time travel nerd and has got this shelf of time travel related Lego sets out of the reach of the kids so they can't play with them, yeah. including the the uh, DeLorean set from a few years ago, um, a Bill and Ted set, which I think we all wish existed, uh, a TARDIS, 
which is a much it isn't the real one they released but you know it looked really cool um uh, a sky was it whatever the hell skynet are doing now yeah it's a skynet portal gate thing complete with a t800 lego man uh, and a hot tub so obviously hot another tub little machine. nod there yeah. but um the really cool th- yeah the really good thing about that as well is that yes they present that as that's what's actually happening but also when they're f- when the kids are fighting over the lego earlier you hear the kid who mm. just looks up he's called finn yeah he says i'm crafting a narrative involving time, time travel. travel yeah so maybe it really it calls the question how yeah. much of this film is real that it, it's sort of like this it's like this film is made up entirely because in the first movie it's like oh it's from a kid's imagination but there's yeah. that one bit from emmett's point of view yes where it's like oh here's where they've broken that a little bit because magic family film whatever and then they move on and they do a lot more but it does make you think actually this. when those bits are happening it's in the context of this when you look at it that way it's like oh it's probably just the kid imagining those it's, those are scenes where he's not played it he's mm. just imagining it filling it in the gap because why would he why would he randomly hear them singing in a box he wouldn't unless in his head he's imagining them trying to get his attention he goes and opens it up yeah and that's why those scenes look looser because those scenes are actually ju- they're not in the imagination they're literally just the oh so you do that and you climb up here and he's, uh, da, 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 da. you know what I mean it's like uh. under the dryers and that's why suddenly the fight <laughs> the fight under the dryer looks all colourful and gets covered in Lego because he's now playing that yeah so it's like okay that's cool so none of these characters are real the only characters that exist in this movie are the mum the dad and the kids that's great Fine, because it's a storytelling device. It's brilliant. Or is it? Yeah, no, it definitely is. Because Rex Dangervest has watched The Matrix, which is a cool film that only older kids are allowed to watch. <laughs> You've seen Back to the Future, which is this old movie that's awesome, and you'll get to watch it one day. It's grown up and gritty. Yeah, I love that they keep saying that as well. They they rib the shit out of Batman, as per usual. Yes, which he really deserves. Yes, um, as a as a franchise. Um, this feels like a, this feels like a bit of a step back for the well Annette Batman in terms of like what you can do with him. But then you remember that this isn't like a Batman movie sequel. Well, he even has this, a light. He has he yeah. has dialogue, <laughs> head lampshade in that. Yeah, in the sense of oh yeah, and I, it was a totally standalone thing. And you know, I learned the value of friendship and having people close to me. And I got my heart broken. And and I'm fine. It's all good. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, great. And then they just move on like it went out. Yeah. Um, which is quite funny. Quite funny. Like it's a lot. Ray Fiennes reprises Alfred for like three lines of dialogue, yeah. <laughs> but he's there. I think every, every, that, that's your one. That's that's your one visual allusion to that movie having existed. Every, as far as I know, everyone <laughs> whose character returns has the same voice. I don't think there were any dropouts in the voice cast from the people who. Well, there were all characters that. Oh no! Um, so you vi- you briefly see who used to be um, good cop bad cop. <laughs> And you hear a, a growl. Yeah, you hear an archive growl. An archive growl of Liam Neeson. But, uh, Which whether... is, when you think about it, incredibly fortuitous. Yes, because the last thing they would want to have is Liam Neeson having voiced work in this movie in the wake of his recent comments of being a fucking idiot. Mind you, Chris Pratt, same kind of sort of wheelhouse of, we're reassessing if you're a good person and we want yeah. to support you. Yeah, there um, is that. But the overpowering power of lego who is gonna win out here so <laughs> you know uh that being said oh the liam neeson things extended even to hollywood babylon this week is the most oh. this week ep- this week's episode's from last friday and it's the f- last one for a little while because kevin's going off to make a little movie called jane silent bob reboot, reboot. Uh, which starts filming next week yeah so it's fucking happening and yes. we're gonna see it before the end of the year um and he's gonna have to start calling him snack pack because Lunchbox ain't going to cut it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, even in that, Ralph is like, now, that show normally ends with a joke segment submitted in by viewers called Liam Neeson's Cock Jokes. Yes, Liam Neeson's I, Cock. I recall this from my days which, listening to Babylon. Which are very funny, you know. It's, it's it's The joke is that Liam Neeson famously has a rather large cock. It's been talked about by several people in Hollywood who have seen it. Mm-hmm. Um and the joke is thing it's the it's the Chuck it's the Chuck Norris jokes yeah. of cocks. Like Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it's actually three smaller cocks stood on each other's shoulders wearing an overcoat and a and a trilby. It's like, yeah. oh that's kinda of funny. Like Things like that. Um Yeah, uh, Ralph was like, I don't know if we're gonna have we're gonna be able to do this anymore because 
you know, we don't really want to be like, hey, we're the show that uses Liam Neeson as a, as a fun thing. But that being said, yeah. the jokes aren't about Liam. They're about his cock. Which is still big. Uh, yes. However, he says, while we have a think about it, we're definitely going to do it this week because you'll notice the jokes have a theme. And then they did it. All the jokes were basically angled at how much of a twat Liam Neeson yeah. is. So it was like, fair enough. Yeah. So I guess I in the see, I, I guess can, in the break, mm, they're going to mm. decide whether or not they kill this long running item or whether or not they rename it after someone else with a legendarily big penis. So... <laughs> David Tennant. We will sit. Does he have a legendary big penis? He was nicknamed David Tennant on the uh, set of Dot Two by uh, Catherine Tate, John Barrowman, and John Barrowman. Oh, Catherine, I know yeah. Catherine Tate would refer to him as Tennant. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, oh god, he revealed it on. Um... Oh my god, what was that show? It used to be on. It was like was that the Friday Night Project? Was it called that? Yes. And it, had a, it, it was like it was like it was... Alan Carr. Alan Carr and uh, Justin Wass's face. Oh yeah, before he was revealed that he was a one beer. Yeah, um, <laughs> Justin. Yeah, one ball. Yeah, and but they'd have a different guest every week who was basically the host of it that week, and they were sort of like the, the, they were the wingmen. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a really fun show. Though. I remember David Tennant hosted it a couple of times. And it was really good. Yes. Um, so anyway, yeah, I need yeah. to listen to David Tennant's podcast with Johnny Whitaker. It's really good. It's really really good, I'm and she's it, yeah. super adorable. And you really wish that podcast was longer. The Whoopi Goldberg one ends, and you're like, wait, hang on, an hour's gone yeah, by already. Yeah, yeah, it fucking it, flies, man. It's really good. But he's a good host. He just lets them talk. Yes. Get some roll. Get the ball rolling and just let it's him very, talk. Very personable. Next week's Ian McKellen. Oh fuck! I know. Uh, ah! I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Do we have any? I love how they don't. I love how they don't have to do anything. They've already made their money because like Sky and ITV have sponsored it. So it's just like, right, we've been paid. Put it on the iTunes. Let's go on with our lives. Do we have anything more to say about? Lego, Lego Movie, Movie 2, two the, the second, second part. part. Well, uh, it doesn't really leave it open to tell more stories in this world because it definitely doesn't end on sequel bait. No. And because it is based on the emotional turmoil between siblings driving the story from within, whether we realised it or not, um, and because General Mayhem and... Um, it's Mayhem, isn't it? General Mayhem. General Mayhem. And Queen, whatever I want to be, uh, and President Business are all good guys now. Yeah. It would be a bit boring if they hey. did another one and there was another villain. It's sort of like, okay, Queen you're doing the same thing. Be. She's great. Was never a villain. That's the thing, yeah. This this movie... Yeah, good point. Rex was and, the and villain Rex, all along. Rex, a.k.a. future Emmett. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I think I think we've said everything we need to say with these characters. The only thing I can see him doing is maybe in a Toy Story three style. Finn goes to college, but then, Bianca that, goes but then to that's college. just Toy Story three. Hey, I'm not saying it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm just true, saying I wouldn't true. put it past Warner Brothers. True. Um, but the ending of this, the button on the end is so nice. Like oh, the, the reveal, shot. the actual shot itself is such a good visual gag. Lucy gets Emmett a present, sort of apologise for, for you know, um, trying to make him change and be someone who he's not. Yeah, there's she a lot thought of that's what she wanted. There's a lot of be true to yourself. Don't try to be someone you're not. Mm. Don't think that. I love the big fuck you to toxic masculinity that, that, this, that yes. this film is. Yes, um, mm. like there's a lot of there's a lot of that, but yeah, the. So, in an apo- apology for that, Lucy gives Emma mm. the um, the original LP of Everything Is Awesome yeah. by a popular music band, is it? Yeah, well, well um, it's not popular enough that he remembers who it is. I think, I think that, it's called something like that anyway. And then, sure enough, on the cover with their original un unblacked Because it's also revealed that while Style hasn't put coloured streaks in her hair, she coloured most of her hair black yeah. and left a couple of streaks left because she used to be in popular music band yeah and the one that released blows Emmett's mind that final shot just him going <gasps> and <laughs> prolonged him take a breath as Unikitty's hair comes just in from the top right for no reason and just also her expression just getting more and more excited like she's anticipating Emmett's um, Glee. shock yeah and it's just a wonderful last shot and then the, that credit sequence oh because the credit sequence was the first the one's great like yeah. using Lego in a different style to yeah. show the characters as the credits roll which they do this one carries that on in a really elaborate sort of like turntable gadget thing they do a lot throughout this film of having characters that aren't just minifigs yeah, well, they've, playing, got, they've got Lego um, yeah. friends. They've, they've got Lego friends stuff. Duplo. They've got uh, wherever I want to be and the fact that she keeps changing. Mm. She's uh, just a mass of bricks. Yes. 
Um, uh, banana, 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 <laughs> banana, whatever it's called. Um, uh, ice cream cone. Yes. Oh Christ! And like the, the but the designs of them not just being minifigs. Yeah. With like weird head or anything like that. They are actually bespoke pieces of like and the, the and just the amount of forms that whatever I want to be takes. Yeah. Throughout Tiffany the, Haddish, I think, is the best performance. In the musical numbers, the they're incredible. Yeah. Well, because that's the thing as well. I was like, oh, oh, they're going to go this way. Oh, yeah, it's a musical. Way. By the way, by the way, this is a musical. Yeah, but the music, the musical numbers are aware that it's an odd musical oh, and yeah. embrace it. They lean into the everything is awesome style teen pop thing. Yeah. Oh, God, the, the um, this song's going to get stuck inside your This is, song's going to get stuck inside your This song's, song's going to get, get stuck, stuck inside, inside your head. head. Um, um, but the other songs, like it's not these aren't the musical sort of songs. We're necessarily going to be listening to them separate from the movie, apart from maybe no. that, apart from maybe that one. Um, well, yeah, because it's stuck inside your head. Yeah. But in the scene and everything, they work really bloody well. That's my, you know, my one complaint that I can think of. Aside, because ultimately this is a this is a fine sequel. Yeah, it is a fine sequel. I don't think it's better than the first. Cause I think the first had more of an emotional gut punch. I think and it was it, more of a surprise. I think it might be better than the first because I think the themes are stronger. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, um, it didn't hit as it didn't it didn't hit as hard for me in that respect simply because I think uh, the surprise of the first one, yeah, as an event and then as a, as, a, as an executed story, I was I was so taken aback and, and oh, yeah, I still yeah, get yeah. that feeling when I revisit the first one. Yeah. Um. So maybe time maybe time will change that for me, but. Uh, uh, bu- 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 who was going? Shit. But, but my only complaint really was just the sound mix in the musical numbers. Yeah, I felt, I felt like the song and the dialogue intimately drowned I mean, each other out a bit. That's that's a pretty minor complaint to have as as yeah. movies fucking go. So yeah. I think this is the first great movie of the year. I mean, you know, it's only February, so true. Yeah, there's time. There was time now. <laughs> Yes. And speaking of time, we're out of time. We're out of this time. This week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are out of time. time. So, if you, you dirty little monkeys, mm-hmm. hit monkeys. Hit monkeys. I've seen the Lego Movie 2. Let us know what you thought of it. Big damn contact at gmail.com. Yes. You can also tweet to us at Big Damn Cast. You can also send your love and support towards this handsome man on twitch.tv slash Big Damn Stream. Yes! As he is ploughing. Oh, Plowing through aliens, colonial I wish I was marines. I, the yesterday's stream was plagued by technical issues because yeah. I think my capture card doesn't want to play colonial marines anymore. It doesn't want to get to the twist. It, it got, we got there. Oh, and it's, it's that's why it broke. It refused to believe it. It is, bait, it is the unreveal. It's this game's so gonna get stuck inside you. This game's gonna get stuck. It arrives with so little fanfare and. Oh God. And the cutscenes are so poorly directed and animated and voiced that it might... It, mm, no, it's just bad. Especially coming, up, coming off the Yakuza, which had incredible... Extremely long. But incredible like facial animation and voice acting in the cutscenes. And a great script. Uh, although, it, obviously, it was translated. So I don't know how much of that is a translation in the original script. But then to this piece of shit... This thing game was in development for like a decade. Yeah. And this oh, is what yeah. they shat out. And they released all that stuff in the lead up saying this is the canonical sequel to Aliens. It's in the Alien universe. It's barely a story. Fox have created it with us. It's greenlit. I'll, I'll, look, I'll try and make you feel a little bit better. I'll give you something to think about till we pod again. Yes. How would you refer to Corporal Hicks mm-hmm. lay on top of heated bread? I know exactly what you're going to say. Say it. Michael Bean's on toast. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone! <laughs> that joke's going to get stuck inside you. That joke's going to get stuck inside you. That joke's going to get stuck inside you.